Hey guys, thanks for checking out my channel, Mavericks Arcade. My name is Chuck. Today we're going to be discussing the Ultimark Servo Sticks. These are great joysticks. Um, I've replaced my U360s with these joysticks because they are just awesome. Now, they do come with the option of an RGB illuminated handle, which I highly recommend because it's just awesome to have that added to your control panel, another light to control. Personally, I love as many various effects and lights that I can do, so this was a great option. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to show you the Ultra Stick, or the Servo Stick comes with a um, standard red ball, and you first first step we're going to show is how to change that. So right here is the picture of the joystick normally, and then I show a picture of the side where the switch connectors are. Uh, so the first step you want to do is on the top, undo those four screws and just lift it off and keep those screws separate. Underneath you can see the stick just kind of rests in that little uh, cutout for it. So just lift it up from the stick and the whole assembly comes right out. Now when you flip it over, you can actually pull that spring back kind of like a syringe. You know, you just hold it and just pull it back and you'll see the retention clip um, right there. So just use a flathead screwdriver or something to carefully on the back side of that retention wedge it in there and pop it off. Try not to bend it because you will need that retention clip to reassemble. So we just pull the stick out, um, pull the washers and everything off and just pull the stick out and then grab your new stick um from the rgb upgraded pack now one side will look like a thread and you will see it has an led be careful not to push or damage that led on the other side it will look like a headphone jack that is where the led will eventually connect so in reassembling the first step is to take that little um metal disc it's got a curved bottom and a flat top and we put that up on the stick as way shown in the picture then we take the main black part and slide it over so it nestles inside that metal switch. We then use the washer on the bottom side. Next comes the smaller of the little black pieces. Um, it's going to be the black piece that's small enough in diameter where the uh, spring can fit over it. So make sure to put that in place. Then you put in the other black piece um, as shown in the picture. And then you're going to have to hold it back. Again, try to be careful not to damage that LED, but hold back the spring and then push the retention clip back on. Now, in my case, it was actually kind of difficult to get that retention clip back on because the shaft of this um, joystick is larger. So the retention clip doesn't fit exactly the same. What I was able to do is I was able to hold it back with one hand, get the retention clip basically in position on one side, and then use a, side of, a, a needle nose pliers just to kind of crimp down and get that retention clip to flip, uh, fit over, and that was able to fix the problem. The Apparently my wife wants to print something. Excuse that noise. Um, the next step is uh, take that new assembly and just drop it down into the rest of the joystick housing. You may have to wiggle it just a little bit to get the switches to give a little so to slide down, but it'll just pop right in place. Then you put that silver... Um, plate back on and just screw the four screws in and then you'll have the joystick you can put the ball on it just to check but that's all there is to it now on the underside you can see that the wiring harness just plugs in like a headphone jack would the next step is the actual servo servo motor and what you'll do is on the side where that white plate is protruding is where the motor will go the screws will point inward and when you mount the joystick, two of those screw holes will also be shared by the servo mount. So we go ahead and we put that in place just to see how the look and feel of it works. And that's it for this part. The next part is um, on one of the controllers, you'll need to have the USB board. Now, you could mount this off of the board somewhere in the middle of the case. But I prefer just to put it with the joystick and have the other joystick run to it. So in the little bag, you see you have a washer with two spacers, two little nuts, and two little screws. So what you want to do is on the top side of the board, drop the screws into the two pre-drilled holes, and then use your fingers to hold those screws in place as you flip the board over. Then you put the, washer, the spacers in place, and then put the yellow um, part for the server motor on as shown in the picture then go ahead and put the bolts underneath 
and tighten it down. Again, don't tighten it down too tight where you cause damage, but just tighten it down so it's nice and firm. Now, in the next picture, you can see the way it will look when the uh, board is approximately in position. And then you can see in the next picture, I have both two joysticks connected. So you can see the board with the USB. There is positive and negative indicated on the circuit board, so you can see that. But as you can see in the picture there, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. And it goes, um, the, the sequence is um, from the USB connection, it's red, black, red, black. From the outermost part of the board, it's black, red, black, red. But that is essential for allowing the joystick to actually function. And um, after that, it's a matter of installing the um, USB device on your computer. The drivers are available from Altamark's website. So once you've installed the software from Altamark's website, the application is called Joytray. Now you can launch that in Windows and you get a nice little menu, four-way or eight-way, which will change the servo. However, there is an option that says change to hardware mode. Warning, do not do this unless you want it to be permanent. This cannot be changed back. Again, this cannot be changed back. If you select hardware, change to hardware mode, then it makes it a full-time button toggle, which you'll have to put another button on your case that just toggles the joysticks. Don't do this. Keep it configured where it's done by the software, four-way or eight-way. And after that's done from the command, you can launch the application and do joytray.exe space dash servo space joy four-way, or you can do joy eight-way. Um, also, when you're using the Windows GUI, you can use F4 or F8 to toggle from four-way to eight-way. Now, in the video I'm showing up here in the corner, you can see I've installed my joysticks and I am running the command four-way and eight-way so that I can, you can see the motors turning. Again, this allows you in your games to get that nice physical tactile feel of a classic or authentic arcade joystick. One thing to note, um, when you do actually go to install these under your control panel, the screws that hold the part with the yellow servo motor on it, do not tighten those 100% of the way down. That motor needs to move just a little bit. Um, what will happen otherwise is as it swings, the motor swings the, the white piece on the bottom, it will jam up if those screws are too tight. Again, the motor just needs to move a slight bit in order to function correctly. Now, um, I don't, shouldn't need to show you, but what I've done to control those games in my, um, I use LaunchBox for my front end, um, but what I've done is I've made a batch file um, that basically just, um, the first command in it is the joy tray space dash servo space joy eight way. Um, and basically then the next line of that file is the main command percent one. And then in my launch box, I've changed my default MAME emulator to say MAME 8-way. And instead of launching MAME EXE, I launched the batch file. So what happens is when you launch a game that's using MAME 8-way as its emulator, it passes the name of the ROM to the batch file. The batch file runs and runs Joy 8-way. Then it runs MAME 64 and then the ROM, plus any other command lines I've entered like full screen and stuff like that. Then I just copy that file and make a batch file for launch four way. And it's all the same commands, but instead of saying servo stick eight way, it says four way. Then what I can do is I have, um, I've created another main ROM emulator or another ROM emulator, sorry, another main emulator. And instead of pointing to the eight way batch file, I point to the four way batch file. That way, any of my arcade games that are four way, I can just modify the emulator that's being used for that game to a four-way emulator. That way, when you launch the game, it's making sure to run the joy command for either eight-way or four-way to give you the most authentic feel in all your games. I found that to be the most simple way to do it. Uh, by default, all my games I configure as eight-way, and then the older classics, I go in and I manually change the ROM emulator to be four-way. Another thing to note is the when you're installing the joystick on your control panel, 
the shaft for this joystick is larger than the previous joystick's non-illuminated handle. So the black washer, unless your joystick upgrade kit came with a different washer, the original washer will be a little too small for the, the newer joystick illuminated handle. So just take a drill bit and add an angle, bore out that plastic just a little bit, and it'll fit on the joystick. As far as the connectors on the joystick, uh, the switches on this joystick, the outermost connector is the one which will have your common wire that runs to all of them. The middle of the switch, the middle uh, metal part, is where the um, signal from the uh, board, from your keyboard encoder, will plug in. Um, again, on the picture here, you can see I've made using USB or wire from a network cable, I've made my own little loop that goes on the common wires um, that plugs into the rest of the daisy chain. And the middle wire uh, or the middle switch buttons shown here are the ones that you use to connect your signal cables. Now, um, the way you mount this joystick doesn't matter because the switches are completely arbitrary. Unlike, say, the U360, which has a definitive up or down direction, this joystick can be mounted in any orientation. It's just when you connect your buttons and program the buttons that they have to be set correct. Now, um, accessing these or hooking up the LED is just like any other illuminated switch. Um, I'm going to have a, another video specifically about the, um, the Ultimark um, IPAC uh, advanced um, uh, keyboard encoder and LED controller. So look for that video for instructions specifically how to deal with that one. I'm also going to have a video specifically about the functionality in, of LED Blinky. Um, so that's the reason why that content is not added here. Um, and as far as you know, encoding, actually using the encoder, that again will be on a separate video. This is just specifically about the hardware of this servo stick. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click like below and leave a comment. If you have questions or suggestions, please email mavericksarcade at gmail.com. And if you're into consoles, classic gaming, or home arcades, please consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks again for watching.